Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're on another segment of the Bargello. The pattern I'm using is a Ron Carlton pattern and the fabric that I'm using is Caribbean. Now it's a fun sew along and I'm glad that you're doing it with me. We're to the segment right now to where I'm going to turn all of this goodness into the cylinder for the next step. Now is this not a beautiful fabric line? I'm telling you right now, it's just gorgeous. All these colors are going to turn out fabulous. So the next step that we have to do is basically, you're going to take your two ends and you're going to turn it in right sides together. And you're just going to shake it out to make sure that everything's done. You've did all of your ironing of all of your seams in the directions that they needed to go. And now we're going to line up these two corners because your ends aren't really going to matter because we're going to cut those off when we get ready to start the next little step here in just a minute. So what you're going to do is give it a good pinch, shake it out so everything comes into alignment, and we're going to do one last final seam right here. And I'm going to feed this through the machine. You're going to keep true to your one quarter of an inch and make sure everything stays in alignment. I've taken my time and been really diligent on this step of sewing each one of these together. So you're going to see that your slow work and steady eye is going to make a difference when you're making your bar jellies come to life. So get this in and it's just a short seam. It's not a great big long one, but I'm taking my time and making sure that all of these little pinked edges stay consistent. You don't want to pull your fabric, you want to let your machine do it. And let me see, I'm going to just keep it going. tape as well as watch my presser foot. That way I'm staying consistent and I'm just letting the machine do the work. We're down to the last like 12 inches or so and it's going to go real, really quick now. That final tack in here at the end. This Ron Carlton pattern, this is the second time that I've used it and I loved it the first go around in yesterday's video. You'll be able to see how beautiful it turned out. I did it as a rainbow. So now we've got our bar jello lined up. You're going to take a minute and you're going to press your seam in the direction that you wish it to go. Then you're going to make a decision on how you want to fold it out. So you've got your cylinder made and it's really important that you keep things in alignment. So I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and just use that seam that I just put in because I really want my Bargello to start here when I start cutting it and getting it rolled out. So I'll be right with you as soon as I get it folded up on the table and I'll show you what I'm doing there. All right, now I've got my cylinder laid out. Basically, I have just folded it in half and I have it all hand pressed flat. The next step is I'm going to move the pattern out of my way and you're going to be able to see that I've taken my time and made all of my markers that's going to go along each and every piece. Every one of them, I'm going to start with three and a half, go to three and a fourth and so on. So as I'm making my cuts, you're going to be able to hear me articulate along the way. These will be clipped and follow this along the way as I'm making this se section. So I'm going to slide this out of the way. One thing I do recommend highly, and it's not listed in the pattern, but it helps me every time I do these, is I put little pins in sporadically. No rhyme or reason as to wear, and it just makes sure that my my fabric does not shift as I'm making my cuts. I'll be moving my fabric a little bit from time to time, and I just don't want anything to move. 
So this is just a little extra tip that I've learned along the way. So now I can move that out of my way. I'll move this down here to the end because I'll start here top left and work my way across. On the pattern, you'll see that it's listed right here. I'm using 41 jelly roll pieces. This go round, I'm using the 42, so I've added the three and three fourths because I want a bigger wave in mine. And I'm starting with three and a half versus the three and one fourth. You can tweak your pattern however you would like. I just like the sharper, deeper wave this go round in mine. So we're gonna begin with, the th I'm gonna trim off the edge to give me a sound starting point, and then we're gonna start cutting left to right until we're out of the whole cylinder. So let's get busy cutting. So let me get this squared up. I have it lined up here across the bottom. And I wanna see right here where I'm at. I think I lined it up on my mat really well. And all of my parts are in. So I'm just gonna start right here and just give it a good square up. Line my roller to the one quarter, one inch up here. And we're gonna take this little edge off. And that's gonna be just set aside to our scrap bin for whatever the need, or you can just go ahead and give it a little toss. So now our next, our very first cut now is gonna be the three and one half. One, two, three and one half. You're gonna line your roller up and this is gonna be, it looks like a big cut. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're lining up top to bottom all the way along. And this is gonna be really pretty. I'm telling you, you're gonna love your Bargello when it's done. So I'm gonna take my first clip and I'm gonna make a decision really quick where I want my Bargello to start. I know I'm gonna to wanna to start on my yellow. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna be picking anything apart right now, but what I am gonna do is flip it over and I'm gonna give it the first label. That way, when I go to hang it up on my wall, I'm gonna know exactly where it's gonna go. My next one is gonna be three and a fourth, and I'm gonna just line up and keep everything consistent and straight. Double check, it's easier to measure twice than cut once. And just keep going, just like this. And wherever you hang your tag, that's where you want to hang them consistently all the way along. Because as you're moving your Bargello, that's where you're going to get your wave. The next one's going to be a three inch cut. And stay true to your lines. You don't want to get a skew anywhere. Open it up and flip it over. And it looks like I've got a lot of tags, but trust me, we're gonna use them all. Now I'm gonna slide this down and I'm gonna make sure I stay lined up. That way I'm staying square and center. Next one's gonna be two and three fourths. So two, pull my pin, place it out of the way. You can use weights here, but I just use my hand and go slow. Flip it over and continue the same process and make sure that you're consistent with tagging everything. The next one's gonna be two and a half. Line up and stay.
This cuts two and one fourth. <laughs> The next cut is a two inch cut. And keep consistent with keeping it lined up straight across the bottom on your line. And as you can see, they're getting thinner and thinner and then we're gonna start going back up in numbers. And that's where you're gonna start to see the magic happen. The next one is one and three fourths. The next one is one and one half, and I can pull a pin here. And you can use those weights to help hold these down if you'd like. The next one will be one and one fourth. And this is where it's gonna peak as we're doing this, and you're going to see the wave start as you're sewing it together. And you're going to pay special attention when you get to the sew-in on this. Because your seams are going to get really tight as you're working it. The next one is a one inch cut, and then we're going to start right back up the roller. Now we're at one and one fourth. You're coming back up from the peak that you just made in all of your cuts. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we go to start breaking seams and bringing things together. The next one is gonna be one and one half. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm hitting every number so that you can verbally hear me doing it and talking about it all the way through on just this one segment. This is where the magic literally happens with your Bargello. And you have to stay consistent with lining things up. One and three fourths. And follow your lines. And I do recommend changing out your rotary blade before you start. You want your cuts really sharp. This one is gonna be a two inch. Two and one fourth. And I will call them out, like I said, all the way along this one cylinder. Two and one half. And now you're gonna see it moving along really fast because we're getting our numbers back up. So it's two and a half, line it up, and make your cut. I'm gonna pop the pin here because I'm finished with that one as well, and two and three fourths. And 
I believe we're only going to get one more cut. But we'll see. We've got a three inch here. Yes, this will be the final cut on this cylinder. So we know we're stopping at three. So when we start with the next cylinder, we're going to start the same layout. We're going to start cutting and make sure your fold line and everything is consistent. This here now is scraps. So this will be your number three. I'll get these hung up and then I'll show you how to pick them out and lay them out. So I'll see you back in just a second. So now we've got everything cut and now you're going to see all of the excitement. So have a look, see. Isn't that going to be fabulous? So now we're going to get back over to me for just a second. And we're going to start using our good friend, Jack. So we're going to start with the three and a half. And then you're going to look at all of your colors and see which one you want to be in the top left of your quilt when you're starting it. I'm choosing to use the yellow because I think that's going to be like a burst of sunshine. Mine's ocean themed kind of. So that's why I'm going to start here. So I'm going to give good old Jack a minute of my time and we're just going to go along all of this seam and start picking it out and take your time. You don't want to rip your fabric and it's just, it's kind of like relaxing just to go ahead and pluck a seam here and there. But once you see how fabulous this is going to look, you're going to be like blown away. No fuss, no muss. Take your time. And almost there. So I've popped my tag, like I tell you. And you can leave those threads because they're not going to matter right now. And you're going to take this first piece, take your little threads, just give them a little pull out. So now you've made your first separation. So you know you started at the third one up. And it's really important that you stay consistent. And you're going to put your tag on for your three and a half. I'm going to be jumping up and down. And what I'm going to do along the way is I've got my first one pulled. And then the next one I'm going to just roll my cylinder. And I'm going to pull this one that's right here and then it's just going to keep rolling and I'll see you back along the way throughout the process. So now that I have 18 of the 19 cuts picked out and lined up, I'll give you a look see real quick at what it looks like so far. So as you can see, I'm going from the yellow at the top and it's going to segue across all the way and I've left my three inch marker to be used as a marker so when I get my next section ready to cut, all of this will be finished and set aside and then I'll bring number three over and start on this side. So I'm going to know where I left off. So that's the why that's there. I will pick the seam and have it hanging but it won't be added to this piece. So. Thank you guys for joining me today for this little segment of how to lay out your bar jello. And the next part that we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you how important it is to get these laid out. We're going to start with our three and a half inch and work our way across. And it's going to be a slow, lengthy progress process, but we're going to pin at every junction. I've seen people that felt confident enough. They could just hold it and manipulate the seams. That's going to be your call. I'm a pinner or a clipper. So I'll see you back in the next video. Take care and God bless.